Well, good day. It's uh, the end of December in uh, 2019. Uh, this is probably the last video I'll make for this year, and I'll try and make another one in 2020. Today I'm going to make a couple of blanks for uh, a match chess game. Basically, it's a round circle with uh, indexed holes, 16 indexed holes around the outside, and 8 indexed holes on a circle closer to the center. They'll each be drilled about half inch diameter, half inch deep, and I'll make a series of little pins to uh, fit in each of the holes, and um, and then we'll go from there. But initially, to start with, I have to take a chunk of wood like this and turn it into a round. And so one of the things I like to do is I just like to use a, a, a set of uh, dividers. They're just sharp on both ends. And rather than use a pencil, I just try and find the center of the piece of wood by guessing and by golly to go back and forth and find out okay there's the maximum diameter I can get out of this piece of wood and I'll set it close to the edge here and then I'll just use the, uh, the divider and put a scratch mark all the way around in the wood. How simple is that? Don't need to worry about a pencil and for uh, drilling purposes, I don't know if the camera will pick up the, uh, the scratch mark on there, but it, it, there's enough of a scratch mark to allow me to go to the bandsaw and cut it into a round. So I've already cut a few of those rounds, so I've made a, made a few like this. And uh, I'll go and finish cutting these, and uh, I'll be back in a few seconds. Couple more blanks made. All right, we're back at the back at the lathe again. I've got my blanks all cut out. I've got a center mark on here. I'm just going to squeeze this up against the uh, the chuck. And that particular chuck, I'm going to use a recess on. So I'll just uh, put a recess on this side. That'll allow me to hold it uh, better and turn it around. I'll probably turn it around while it's between centers. And I'll put a recess on. Then I'll spin it around. I'll, uh, I may not even spin it around. I may um, put the recess on. I'll change chucks, grab it with my cold jaws, finish the bottom off. Then I can spin it around. I'll never have to come back to the bottom again. So uh, let's make a let's make a mark on here, roughly where the uh, where the other jaws will be able to expand into. So sighting down from the top, I can see the jaws, and that's roughly. I'll need to make the recess roughly that large. Got my face shield, and uh, let's get on with it. I 
give us give a shout out to uh, Mike Peace for uh, the design on one of his videos. He showed how to uh, make this little uh, tool for cutting a perfect dovetail with the tail stock in place. It allows you to get right in close, even for the smaller smaller chucks. I can get right in close and put a small dovetail in while holding it up against the uh, against the chuck. It's a great little tool. If you don't have one, I'd suggest you pick up a piece of even old carbon steel and, and make one. And you, once you use one, you'll wonder how you ever got by without it. got this set up here I'm going to turn a bunch of these round and put the recesses in them. I've got to make a series of these so I'm going to do all of this roughing out first. bigger I'll adjust my pins. So one of the things you might have noticed is uh, on my cold jaws I took a felt pen and uh, put a mark around on a couple of circles so I can tell where the buttons are. Uh, for the longest time I would start to change buttons, then I would get distracted and then I'd come back and then I'd <coughs> have a hard time trying to remember whether I was going inside or outside. But once I put these little uh, black marks on, I can always, when I come back I can always find out where the where the pins are relative to the black mark and it just makes it easier. Sometimes these old brain cells don't uh, retain as much short-term stuff as they should. So every little bit helps. And some people have asked me why I don't use a, a power drill or something to spin these in and spin them out. But what I have found and I've seen other people do that do that Sure, it takes them out real quick, and it spins them in real quick. But if you ever get one cross-threaded, 
it cross threads it real pit real quick and being as these plates are aluminum once the threads are damaged there's really not a lot you can do about them and uh, these things are relatively expensive I'd sooner take a little bit of extra time and care and do it by hand it doesn't take that long and I've had these cold jaws for about eight years now never had a problem so I'm, I don't want to start now there, I moved them all out one hole so you can see they're all one hole out from the black line that they were on. Now I've got lots of room. Okay, so now we've got this round. I'll just shape it a little bit and we'll uh, smooth off the front and get ready for uh, indexing. We'll, using, we'll be using my, uh, my one-way drill wizard to do this and I also have an indexing attachment that I'll mount on the back of the lathe here to allow me to index the uh, 16 holes. This lathe only has a 24, uh, 24 hole index on the lathe which is fine for doing the 8 in the center. However, it's a little tough to get a 16 um, 22 and a half degrees off of uh, uh, an indexing head that only goes to 24. But, uh, we'll show you how I do that. It's not the best way, it may not be the only way, but it's the way that I found that works for me. And so that's what we'll do. So one of the things I like to do on these game boards, because uh, some of the people that have asked for them are elderly, and uh, to try and pick up a board that's perfectly smooth on the outside and flat, Sometimes it's a little difficult for them to pick up. So I like to put a little bit of a divot, maybe even just a recess on the bottom uh, two-thirds of the uh, outside perimeter so that the, uh, they actually have a lifting groove. It makes it easier for them to pick it up off the table. Okay, so in decision time now, I have to decide where the, uh, from the center, where about the rings are going to be. So I said we're going to drill a half inch hole about a half an inch deep. So if I make the first hole say three quarters of an inch from the outside about there and if we make the so that's roughly three inches from the center so if we make the next set of holes an inch and a quarter in from that Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a, a spin indexer. It allows me to uh, put a pin in here and uh, set it at zero and then go 45 degrees and get uh, every one of the holes will be uh, exactly 45 degrees apart for the inner circle. But to attach this to the lathe, uh, my spin indexer has got a spindle in it that fits my chucks. So what I do is I mount a mount my, my largest chuck and then I slide this towards the lathe. And I got to come up about another eighth of an inch with the whole mechanism and then I'll open the jaws and grab the handle on my chuck. I do when I have this attached is I make sure that I turn the power off the delay so that I don't inadvertently turn the power on. That could get real exciting real quick. So now with this spin indexer in place I'm able to uh, rotate. You can see I'm rotating the lathe and the chuck and the workpiece all at the same time. Yeah, that looks like that's pretty much got it. Turns nice and free. 
And so that's how I index it. Uh, I usually make a, a chart so that I can start at zero on here. And I usually have a piece of paper or something like this here and I'll make a chart on it so that I can follow the numbers. Once we start doing the, uh, once I do the 16, every uh, 22 and a half degrees, uh, I have to be a little bit creative there because this indexer will only go down to one degree. It'll allow me to go 360 degrees in one degree increments. And what I found on the last pr uh, practice piece is that uh, I can do um, 45 degrees to do the center hole, center line and the outer ring for the first pass. And then what I'll do is I'll measure on the piece halfway between the two holes on the 45 centers and mark that as the 22 and a half degree point and I'll slip the jaws on here the 22 and a half degrees so that I can uh, get a new um, a new center mark and then I'll uh, go 45 degrees from that mark so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just go ahead and do it here and you'll you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it I'll readjust the camera here so that we can uh, see the drill wizard in action. So the, one of the keys to setting this uh, drill wizard up is I uh, set my, uh, my tri-square on the lathe, set the uh, banjo at uh, 90 degrees, then I'll slide down the, uh, I'll put a drill bit in here and I'll slide down the drill bit down to the lathe to get the drill bit perpendicular to the workpiece so that we can uh, go in and uh, drill straight in. So one of the things I like to do is I like to mark the holes first with a, uh, a self-centering bit or a, basically it's a, a starter bit. It's got a short shank so it gets fairly straight. Line that up on the uh, on the holes on the line. Walk that, walk this. Okay, that looks about right. So when I, I'll mark all of the holes with this bit, which will give me the centers of all the holes plus a little chamfer. Then when I go with the half inch bit. A half inch bit will center itself perfectly on the uh, on the hole. Like I say, I like to have a sheet of paper here just so I can uh, follow along. I know it's uh, 45 degrees, it's 45 degrees. But when I'm indexing back here, I have to uh, make sure that I set this at 4 plus 5. And it's always nice to have a piece of paper handy so that I can uh, see where I'm at so I can keep track. So right now I'm set on zero. Zero and zero, so it's perfectly centered. This will be hole number one.
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, evenly spaced on that bolt circle. So I'll leave the, um, the drill is already clamped in the tool post. I'm just going to slide the tailstock or the tool post banjo straight out. And about there, that should do it. That keeps it nice and straight. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this. There's a mark there. And I'm going to go to uh, That should be so now we can see that if I make these these holes fold this line out from the center, these will be indexed at the same in line with these, which is fine. However, I need to go 22 and a half degrees. So in order to get that, what I've done is I'll take a ruler. And I've marked these two points. So I'll put the ruler on here and say that's uh, two and three eighths. So if that's two and three eighths, then half of that would be one and three sixteenths. Now if we go metric, it might be a little easier. So that's. Uh, 60 millimeters. So half of that is 30. So I'll just eyeball it here, but that'll be 30. So once I've drilled all of these, then I'll open this chuck, slide the piece of work around until the drill bit lines up with this mark, lock the chuck again, and do another 45 degree round. That'll uh, basically give me the 16 holes at 22 and a half degrees. Like I say, it may not be the right way, but it's the way that I've learned how to do it with uh, the tools that I've got. So now, we'll set this back to one of these marks. Now we'll set it back to zero. I always like to start from the same place, even though it's the same difference. I always like to start uh, from zero so that I can end up with zero and check my work. So this will be the zero and we'll uh, drill the holes. Halfway between the, the, the existing holes, but I think I'm wondering if I should drill those now or if I should change the. I'm going to drill them now. So what we normally need to do is we'll. This is set on zero. I'll loosen this chuck. I'll pull this back. I'll rotate this in the chuck until this drill bit lines up with the measured mark and I'll tighten this chuck again. Set that on zero. Loosen this chuck off, bring this up until it's right in line with that mark, and then tighten this chuck. Still locked in on zero here, and I'm on zero here, so all things being equal, you should be able to drill at 45 degree increments and end up with a hole in between each of the uh, the outer ring. So there we have it. We have uh, 
eight holes indexed here. We have 16 holes indexed here. And uh, now I could drill them out with the, uh, I could even take this to a drill press now and finish drilling them out, or I could uh, change the bit here and, uh, and drill them out here. Okay, so there is the uh, holes index. Take this off. sits on the table. We'll have a die. Right, so we'll have a dice like this. The dice will have different colors. This one's here. I tried to dye the, uh, this particular one. The colors aren't as bright as I'd like to be. So I'm going to change to a, a, an oil-based paint and get some bright primary colors. And basically the net way the game is played is they'll uh, roll the die. Whatever color comes up, they'll take a pin out and base of the pin will be colored as well. There'll be uh, uh, four of each color and uh, so there'll be four of each of the colors on here and the object is, is if they pick a color they get to keep it, they roll again until they don't find a, a pin and then it's the next player's turn and the one at the end that has the most pins wins the game. So it's a memory stimulation game and uh, uh, children will like to play it, and I've had some people in the seniors home ask for them, so obviously they think it would be fun for them to play too, and some of them are 80s and 90s, and they still think it's a fun game to play, so I'm more than happy to make one, and I'll be uh, donating it to uh, that seniors lodge. Alright. Next up is to uh, make the pins. Uh, the pins are pretty straightforward. Uh, just grab a small stick, paint centers, turn it around, turn the shapes all three of them at a time, three or four at a time. And uh, I need to make 24 per game, and so far I've had five people ask for games, so I'll be. Nine more times to go. 
So 24 times 5 is um, 120. So only 119 more to go.